Well, yesterday our time, Donald Trump's meeting with Volodymyr Zelensky in Washington turned into, well, a shouting match. They met ostensibly to sign an agreement to give America access to Ukrainian rare earths and oil and gas. Additionally, the minerals agreement will provide the basis for a more sustainable future relationship between the United States and Ukraine and thus stimulate the long-term prosperity that will help the Ukrainians rebuild their country. It's been demolished. Didn't happen, of course, but for Donald Trump, this was a way for the US to be repaid for funding Ukraine's defence. But the public collapse of those talks raises serious questions for not just Ukraine, but also for Russia and the US. But it does show the strategic importance of rare earths needed in many areas, such as defence, aerospace, computer chips and robotic applications. China, now easily, is America's biggest supplier, the world's biggest supplier of those rare earths. So the tariff war between those countries opens up a potential weakness for the United States and its economy. But Australia also shapes as a major supplier of these minerals. There's Linus with its plant in Malaysia. It's the world's second biggest supplier. There's Alu is another. But the Nolans project in the Northern Territory is expected to be Australia's first ore to oxide rare earths processing operation. It's operated by Arafura Resources and its chief executive, Daryl Kazubo, joins me now from Brisbane. Daryl, many thanks for your time. Let's just take people back to, to ground one, shall we? And that is rare earths themselves. What exactly are they? I've explained some of the applications. And, and is, are they rare or are they not so rare? Yeah, uh, thank you, Ross, for the opportunity to, to talk to you. Um, you're exactly right. Rare earths are of fundamental importance. You can't make everyday electronics like your phone, electric vehicles, wind turbines, robotics, and also military applications as well without rare earths. Now, rare earths aren't that uncommon, but uh, in terms of economic deposits, they're, they're quite rare. So the situation that we have at the moment is there are fundamental importance Demand is going to double over the next 10 years or so, but nearly 90% of the world's supply comes from China. In fact, the only country that has an independent supply is Japan. So if you're the US, if you're Korea, if you're, you're Europe, your EV sector, your wind turbine sector, electronics, robotics are dependent on China. So take me then to what Donald Trump has done in Ukraine and how that might affect demand for rare earths from Australia in the future. Or is there simply an unending demand for these types of minerals? Yeah, so the, the demand, as I said, is going to double over the next uh, 10 years, uh, maybe even more than that. And then uh, that'll predominantly be driven by electric vehicles and then robots will drive that even, even greater demand. Um, what you're seeing is that the, the US, Europe, they've known about this problem for some time. And what you're seeing with Trump, he's being quite decisive in, in acting on this, this issue. Um, what I would say, though, with Ukraine is if you look at the publicly available information on rare earths, it's quite scant and the exploration seems uh, somewhat limited. So it takes typically 18 years to find a mine and take it all the way into commercial production. And if you look at the exploration results, um, you know, it's really at the, in Ukraine, they're probably at the start of that, that journey. So this might be a long-term challenge, uh, a long-term solution for the US, but the US, Europe, Korea, et cetera, they need a short-term to medium-term fix. And that's where Australia comes in. That's where Arafura comes in. So our project, as you mentioned, uh, we're construction ready. Phase one will produce four and a half thousand tonnes, phase two up to 10,000 tonnes, which is about 10 million uh, electric vehicles. And we're at the final step of getting funding. Once we have that funding, we'll be moving into construction. You mentioned order oxide, and this is important because uh, a number of rare earth projects don't go all the way to an oxide. The reason we do is because we want to be able to bypass the China supply chain. If you don't go to an oxide, you're still relying on processing capability that currently exists in China today. OK, so then take me to one other aspect. If you just dig the dirt out of the ground and send it to the United States for processing or send it somewhere else for processing, explain the difference in the price of that as compared with the price if you can get it all the way to the oxide. 
Yeah, good question. So uh, if you produce a concentrate, it's about 30% of the, of the cost. Um, but there's a couple of challenges as well. Um, so firstly, it's having the processing capability. So outside China, that processing capability only really exists in Linus today. A mountain pass in the US are developing that capability. We've spent 18 years developing and proving this process. So it takes some time to develop and, and um, develop the process flow sheet build it and get it get it running but there's also um, there's also radiation challenges around with transport so one of the benefits of doing it on a single site and getting it to an NDPR oxide as in our case you take away those radiation issues whatever leaves the site does not have elevated levels of radiation Okay, so then come back one other step for me, and that is the government itself. Now, through uh, the National Reconstruction Fund Corporation, it's put $200 million into your, your plan. Just explain how important that was in being able to get that plan up in Australia and viable. Yeah, so let me... Uh, and we also got uh, debt from Export Finance Australia and also uh, uh, NAIF. Uh, look, this is very important. And the reason why it's very important is because, as I mentioned before, China's been controlling nearly 90% of production and they've been suppressing prices by overproducing. Uh, over so that's suppressed the, the, the prices. Investors need to know that governments, and it's not just Australia, I mean, Germany's got a role here, Korea, Canada, et cetera, are determined to, uh, if you like, diversify the supply chain, whether that's through tariffs or some other form of trade constraints such as what Europe has, so that we get a proper functioning market and hence a price for these rare earths that encourages investment. So when investors see that we're getting, you know, funds from, from Australia, but also from Germany, Korea, Canada, they know that these like-minded countries are determined to create a supply chain that's uh, that away from China. Chief Executive of Arafura Resources, Daryl Kazubo, many thanks for your time. Thanks, Rice.